is your problem and not your neighbor. <laughs> the devil is your problem and not your neighbor. Now there are two commandments that the body of Christ must, must adhere to as long as they are here upon this earth. Number one, to love God with all your mind, heart, soul, and strength. And number two, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And upon these two commandments hang all of the laws of the prophets. So then, if you learn to love your neighbor as you love yourself, this alone will solve many issues that you will encounter in life. You see, the devil is your problem and not your neighbor. A lot of things that you encounter, a lot of problems that you have to endure, you are looking at a situation, you're looking at a man, what have you, but not realizing that the man is not really your issue. The devil is your problem. I get to it just a little bit. I want you to listen to me and pay attention. You might get something out of this. Now the question is, who is my neighbor? Your neighbor is any other human being that lives upon the face of this earth if regardless to race, color, or language. This is your neighbor. Let me repeat it. Your neighbor is any human being that lives upon the face of this earth in regards to race, color, or language. This is your neighbor. Now when we look at Ephesians, the sixth chapter, in the twelfth verse it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rule of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And let's just put opinion in what I've said thus far. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. That is the key for you to understand. In other words, my fight is not with you, Julia. My fight is not with you, Ray. My fight is not with flesh and blood. But even though this is what we do because of the lack of understanding, a lack of revelation knowledge. So whenever something, whenever a person does something to you, you automatically are looking at that person. Not realizing that that person is doing things to you because he has been influenced. And so, I go back to say this again. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rule of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Now I like to call this a spiritual army, a spiritual satanic army, and the mission is to kill, steal, and destroy every man, woman, boy, or girl on the face of this earth, whether saved or unsaved. But because of a lack of spiritual enlightenment, Satan is able to get away with these things because we lack the knowledge to understand that my problem is not with man, but Satan. That's where my problem lies. When someone is argumentative. When someone's mouth is filled with 
profanity. When someone always is in a combative state of mind, you don't ever take the time to think that could this person be allowing Satan to use him? See, we don't, we don't, we don't think that far. Mm -hmm. We just look at it and say, this person has lost their mind. <laughs> this person can't control their tongue. Mm -hmm. This person is coming after me because they don't like me. Well, who and what caused this person not to like you? Jealousy and envy is not of the father, but it's of the enemy. Mm -hmm. So when we don't look at the fact that the devil is so clever, he understands your pet peeves. And he can get in your people mm. and rub you the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And you look at this person and say to get away with it. Right. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. Hmm? Now that you, you look at the white man. Mm. White man looking at the black man. This Native American is looking at the Asian American or whatever. But Satan is sitting back, crossing his legs, and he's throwing his rocks in hiding his hand. And, but we say we don't need the Bible anymore. When the Bible clearly states that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Everybody in this room is flesh and blood. So the Bible said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, who are not the fire with? See, but we don't pay any attention to that. But we pay attention to the flesh and blood, that's what we can see. But did not the Bible say why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen, because the things that are seen are temporal, but the th things that are unseen are eternal. So no, I'm looking at you because I can see you. So, Everybody in this room is guilty of yielding to the devil and yielding to the Holy Spirit. Now, after a man gets saved, coming to the kingdom of God, his responsibility is to learn how to lean and depend upon the Holy Spirit because he lives on the inside of you. So it's my responsibility to learn how to lean and depend upon him. Because the Holy Spirit will use you, if you allow him to, to get work done on the earth. That God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the angels won't do. So God will give you his Holy Spirit. And if you lean and depend upon him, the Holy Spirit can get a lot of things done through you. So, let's flip the coin, if you will. If the Holy Spirit is using us for good, the devil can also use you for no good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The devil can get into you and mess with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the devil can influence you through other people. You know, you, you are listening to someone because they are very articulate. And they are very small, but spewing out nothing but vitamin, and you and you follow with me. Now if I call somebody's name, you know, they they they're over a large congregation, spewing venom, calling and calling white people devil and all of this kind of stuff and, and what have you. And you got people out there clapping. What the person says is incorrect. But because he or she is very articulate, we are persuaded to listen. So as this person is leaning and yielding to the enemy, he's calling others to follow him. So I say this again, your problem is not your neighbor, but your problem is the devil. And somebody might want to say, well, Pastor, is you trying to oversimplify this? Well, let's look at it this way then. What if we took the devil out of the earth? Mm. 
if I'm oversimplified. What if you did not have any demons in your ear? What if Satan, the devil, and all of that was taken out of the earth? Did you not know that the devil is called the father of death? Now, Pastor Bishop, what are you talking about? Are you saying that death never would have entered the world had it not been for Satan? That's exactly what I'm saying. What if he was out of here? Just did not know that the earth, would, the earth would be a peaceful place? Because the Bible says that God made man upright. But man has sought out many devices. And, and, and Satan understands the, the appetite, if you will. He understands the weakness of people. He, under, he understands the failness of men. And when he comes to tempt, he's not going to tempt you with something that you don't like. He's going to tempt you with something that appeals to your appetite and to your sight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's just say if I were a, you know, a man given to appetite and say that man is mad that he's going to tempt me with a woman. Okay? Can we be honest, y'all? Mm -hmm. Ain't no sense in sending me no other woman. Because <laughs> 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 she's not going to get my attention. Can, can we be honest, y'all? Break it down. See, because he understands my appetite. Because he comes to steal, kill, and, kill and destroy. So he's not going to waste his time because they have heard me talk with my brothers. So that, that, that's what he likes right there. So we're going we, to we settle Susie over there. Because Susie would get him all messed up. Did I have a witness here? Your problem is not your neighbor. Your problem is the devil. Now I'm not over, oversimplified it either. He's here. And the Bible said that he has come with great wrath. Yes. Steadily and constantly accusing the brother. And, and, and here we are, supposed to be so educated. I mean, so knowledgeable. But yet still, we fall so prey to the devices of Satan. All right. Amen. And stuff that is happening to you happening in the United States of America, nations against nations or whatever, but nobody want to say, could it be a principality? Could it be a power? A rule of darkness of this world? A spiritual one? Could, could any of that be behind all of this? So people won't say that because they don't want to look foolish. But I tell you one thing, the Holy Spirit was not foolish. Because all scripture have been given by inspiration of Almighty God. Do I have a witness? Amen. Now, Satan, the devil, is real. The only way that a man can have a chance against him is through faith in Jesus Christ. Let me take my time for this. I hear a lot of people talking about, I, I, I fought the devil all night last night. You may as well go on to sleep. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to win against him. Mm -hmm. I fought the devil all night last night. In other words, you lost a night mm -hmm. of sleep. <laughs> the only way that you will have a chance against Satan is through faith in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> But because the world is filled with anti-faith people. Take the time, Pastor Reese. The world is filled with anti-faith people? What do you mean by that? You just leave here and just go to, go to the store. You know, do what you normally do. And you will find that in your travels, or in your traveling, you're not going to find many people that have faith in God. So therefore, I said again, the world is filled with anti-faith people. They are against 
the faith of God. Mm -hmm. And because of this, Satan will always have an advantage. And while men are so preoccupied into thinking that another man is his problem, Satan continues to cause wars, murder, confusion, hatred, racism, jealousy, envy. These kind of things will continue to happen because of a lack of spiritual enlightenment. The devil is your problem and not your neighbor. Racism, Pastor Reed, wait a minute. You mean to tell me racist against racist? You mean to tell me that's not a man thing? That's a the money thing. Yeah. Yeah. Passed down from generation, from generation to generation. Hatred? That's a same thing. Envy? Same thing. Jealousy? A same thing. Everybody, I believe here in South America, at one time or another, probably have been jealous of someone. And while you were going through it, and when you came through it, if you came through it, <laughs> did it ever occur to you that I played right into the hands of Satan? No, you don't, no, no, you, you didn't think that. Because number one, first thing you'll say that I don't ever listen to Satan. Oh, let's be real here. First thing a Christian would say, I never listened to Satan. Yes, you did. Now, but well, how come when you were at Walmart on Monday, you went to church and had such a good service on Sunday, but you're up at Walmart showing your butt. Because 
some things are happening <coughs> because there is something satanic behind it. We don't see that far. We don't see that far. Now, because we have the Bible and we are uh, the children of God, there were three things that the Bible tells us to do with Satan. Now, I wonder if I asked a question, can anybody answer that? There were three things that the Bible tells us to do with Satan. Three things now. What if I don't know that? Number one, we are to cast him out. Number two, we are to resist him. Number three, we are not to give him place. Number one, cast him out. Number two, resist. And number three, not to give him a place. So what happens if I give him a place? He's going to come in and make himself comfortable. Mm -hmm. Did you not know that you are the keeper of the door of your house? Okay, I'm talking about your, your natural house and your spiritual house. Nothing's not supposed to get in unless you let it in. Now, if you come to my house, I don't want you to come in. I'm going to deny you. And you can put your foot between the door, and you know how I close up? You know how some of those cells will do? You try to close up, they put their feet in. Boy, you better move your foot. You know, I have told you no, I don't want your, your product. But, because you live there, you can allow whoever you want to come in and whoever you don't want to come in. And because of your body, you know, the devil, the devil, the devil want to get into you. Have anybody here ever heard, heard of, uh, of, of, of uh, uh, possession? That means that you, you allow the devil, so much of the devil in you that the right. devil can't begin to control you. Yeah. See, but you have to resist him trying to get in. Hmm? You can't give him place. And we also have the ability by the blood of Jesus Christ and the authority of Jesus to cast him out. I didn't tell you to go down on the corner. Be down there trying to cast out devil. I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> See, the call of God that makes you look foolish. But what I am saying is that if God send you to a place in your own God's business, and if you happen to just run into some demons, I'm talking about people feel with them, people possess with them, you have a right then to cast them out. You don't go looking for that stuff. You got enough of it already. See, a lot of times people don't think that Demon might involve them too. If they don't see anybody folding them out, rolling them out, pressing them out, they don't involve them. Oh, wait a minute. Please. Yeah. You got some stick. <laughs> know how to walk. Mm -hmm. Know how to talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and you, looking, you, you looking at some man. <laughs> But the man is proper. It's the devil. So the next time, I want y'all to, 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 to listen to me very carefully. The next time when someone comes against you, allow your emotion to stabilize just enough to recall what Pastor used to say in the day. Because if you're pretty handsome, you will have somebody that don't like you. Allah, don't be don't be smart to me. <laughs> hmm? And don't be a second color either. Lord. Hmm? See, the next thing you know, everybody coming against you. And and you ought to ask yourself the question. Why are all of these things coming against me? You have to allow your emotions to stabilize long enough and not become combative. <laughs> But allow the Lord said, the Lord said, vengeance is mine, I shall repay. Amen. In other words, the Lord already knows that, that you're in the lion's den. So you're standing still and holding your peace and saying, Lord, why? Why are these people coming against me? And here's what the Lord is going to say to you.
He's going to say to you, the people that you see with your eye, that's all you see. But if I removed the blindness from your eyes, you'll see what's actually happening. Oh, Lord, thank you. See, because the devil knows what makes you mad. He knows what makes you happy. He knows exactly what to, you know, to, to keep from you or whatever, so that you can start running your blame mouth. <laughs> and let, let me say this again. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So why then can't we see this? You know why? Because we're so used to dealing with the, 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 we're so busy dealing with the, what we can see. We're so busy to deal with that, and the devil is able to get away with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody, you know, step on your foot. Mm -hmm. Somebody steal 50 cents from you. <laughs> you mean to tell me you, 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 you ready to go home and premeditate mm -hmm. and go and take somebody's life that stepped on your foot? I mean, you know, premeditation, that's called murder, and you're going to get some time. But damn, caused it. <laughs> we don't see it. We don't see it. Why do you think there is so much trouble and turmoil going, going on in the churches? Why do you think some of, some of the big name pastors now, someone that we all had admiration for, and all of a sudden now, the name will be kicked around on YouTube as a, as a hiring now. Okay. But 30 years ago, 25, let's go 25 years ago, you can see that that man or that woman had feel for the Lord. What happened? What happened? You mean to tell me, friend, just gonna go to bed one night and just wake up and all of a sudden just just start walking away from God? No, it, it, it doesn't happen that way. Right. See, what people fail to understand is that the devil will take as much time as necessary to embarrass yes, you. You better be careful how far you go up. Everybody clapping, patting you on the back and what have you, and they'll be the first one to say, I knew he wasn't any good. Right. But what caused the person to become like that? He had something and some things in his ear that he or she didn't deal with. You, you know I like to say this, Demetra. You know, we always, there are always three schools of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts, the devil thoughts, and the thoughts of the Holy Spirit. Right. Who thoughts are you listening to? Because the one that I prevail, and that's what you're going to follow. <laughs> Are you listening to me? So, three things that the Bible tells us to deal with the devil. Cast him out, don't give him place, and resist him. Let's turn to Ephesians 4. Verses 25 through 27. Ephesians, 20, Ephesians 4, 25 through 27. When you get the same man. place to the devil. Now let me go to the 25th verse. Wherefore, put him away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one of another. Now when you say that word neighbor, that's not talking about the friend that lives next door to you. That is representing every other human being upon this earth, whether Come, race, or language. When it talks about the neighbor, y'all see that? It's not talking about who he is next door to you. Notice the 26th verse. Be ye angry and sin not. 
Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Can we talk about this verse just for a minute? 26 verse. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Now, what, what, what is that talking about, you hear? Be angry and sin not. If I can use this terminology, the Bible is saying that God gives you permission to be angry about certain things. You cannot be a living person without ever not being angry about something. But notice, after it said be angry, but sin not. So you can be angry and sin, and what caused you to sin when you're angry? Your mouth. <laughs> you can be angry and don't nobody know it until you open your mouth. And notice it said, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. And what is that saying? It said that if you're going to become angry, and you will one day, deal with it as soon as possible. Don't let it be like a record going round and round and round in your head. See, because in that, you are premeditated as to how you're going to behave the next time you see that person. Be angry. And seeing that in other words, hold your mouth. Watch what you're saying. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. It's not saying that, you know, like by the end of the day, you got to deal with this. No, it's not saying that. But what it's saying is that you got to be prudent enough to deal with it so that it won't have you. Here we go, my lady, you still ain't know the same thing. And I wonder during that 30 day period of time, how often. Have that record went around and around in your head. And, and the fact of the matter is, what it's doing is causing a root of bitterness, hatred. Mm -hmm. And when that people, those people, or whatever that situation arises again, guess what? Mm -hmm. It's going to set something off in you. Right. <laughs> then you are reliving it mm -hmm. again. I stop by to tell somebody. The <laughs> devil is your problem, not, not your neighbor. And, and, and the fact that the man, he, 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 he does it, we let him get away with it. I'm talking about Christian folk. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about unsaved folk. I'm talking about people that come and hear the word of God. How can you hear the word of God, a strong word of a life changing word and be out cussing and fussing and very, I mean, very, you know, after three hours after you heard the word, what happened? <laughs> 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 and then the people were like, want to, want to, want to make fun of you. Devil ain't even no devil ain't even. He tried to influence you and you did it. But he comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. See, when we are living it. And then, you know, like the mainstream of society will say that you, you, you're, you're simplifying this. No, I'm not. See, first of all, I want to let you know what kind of enemy you got against you. He was up in heaven. Mm -hmm. Called Lucifer. Yes. And did you not know that he plotted to come against God? Mm -hmm. He wanted to be like the most I am. He wanted to be like God. And, and, and he, was, he, was, he was so clever that he had a third of the angels. He, he influenced them to follow him. Mm -hmm. But God, being God, came against his plan, kicked him out of heaven. And when he was kicked out of heaven, where did he go? He came to earth, and the Bible said that he's here with much wrath. Wrath against whom? Us. So because you can't see him, he had an advantage. This is why we have to learn how to walk by faith. And, 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 and the fact of the matter, you know, every time somebody says something about you, and you hear something, somebody says something about you, before you get off, 
how do you do call them? Uh, allow your emotions to stabilize just a little bit and say, why would they say something about me like that? You know, I, I, had, I, had, I heard that uh, a preacher, I was close to it. You know, he made a statement about me and said that I had a, a slave mentality. Tell them I didn't call my name, tell them I had, had no slave mentality. It made me, it made me upset. And I said, well, what would he want to know me well? What would he say something like that to me? About it? But you know what? I never, I never confronted it. I never said a word. Because I realized that jealousy and envy and all of that stuff can get involved. Mm -hmm. He didn't really feel that about me. It didn't. But he was influenced and he came out of his mouth. <clears throat> See, but a lot of times we, we go by the first word, and a lot of times the devil, he get that first word out there, he'll you know, start the war. <laughs> Breaking up friendships, destroying marriages, calling the people to be in divorce court, and all of that. Why? You listening to somebody, you have to marry, you listen to somebody that they got a divorce, honey, you know that uh, 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 an affair is healthy. <laughs> Have you ever heard anybody, I mean, like you go to the soap opera, you'll find it. Yeah. You go to one of those soap operas, they'll be telling you, like, you know, to have a fat. I said, how your marriage is healthy? What's healthy about it? <laughs> it's demonic, that's what it is. And the next day, you know, you're going to be in the divorce club. Because somebody's going to find it out. Are we okay? <clears throat> Let's look at another verse. Let's look at James. Okay, in that verse uh, in Ephesians, it said, don't give the devil a place, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look at James and see what James has to say. Uh, James 4 and 7. Write it down if you can't find it. I want you to read it. Now, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Notice in Ephesians it says, don't give him a place. Notice that James is saying, resist him and he will flee. But I want you to notice what James didn't say. James didn't say how long that you are to resist him. Pastor, would you mean to tell me that I might have to resist the devil for two weeks? Oh, Pastor Reese, you mean to tell me I might have to resist the devil a month? Pastor Reese, you mean to tell me I might have to resist the devil a year? That's exactly what I'm saying. Submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. You have to understand that, sir. Christianity is a lifestyle that you live. So if you put all your eggs into the basket of Christianity, it won't be so hard to resist as long as necessary. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he shall flee. Now let's go, now we go to Mark, the 16th chapter. And I'm not going to have you turn it there. But anyway, in Mark, the 16th chapter, it's talking about casting him out. But Jesus said these words right before he went back to heaven. And he said, these signs shall follow those that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. Now I said that there are three, three things that you got to do to the devil. Resist him, cast him out, don't give him a place. <clears throat> Notice Jesus in his last words before he went back to heaven. He was given this, this he was given these last words, and this was part of the Great Commission. He said, these signs shall follow. Those that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. And like I said earlier, you don't go looking for devils to cast them out. But if they are happen, if they happen to be in an area where God is sending you, by all means, the anointing, the power will be there. Is that okay? Let's look at another verse. 
Let's look at <coughs> Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter two, <coughs> verses twenty-four through twenty-six. That's Second Timothy. Chapter 2, verses 24 through 26. Let me see if this is what I'm looking for. Let me look at 1 Timothy 2 and see what that's saying. I know it, one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, it must be 2 Timothy uh, 24 through 26. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instruct those that uphold themselves. If God free adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snap of the devil, who are taken captive at his will, and that they may recover themselves out of the snap of the devil who are taken captive at his wheel. I wonder, have anybody ever been in the snap? Hmm? You don't you won't see it coming. All of a sudden you're just there. Especially if you're not getting the word. That's the reason you always put an emphasis on the word. I wonder why do you do that? The Bible says the gospel is the power of God for salvation to heal that believe. So I must emphasize the power of the gospel because the Apostle Paul said that I'm not ashamed of the gospel that I preach, for it is the power. And so the reason why so many believers, I told about unbelievers, the reason why so many Believers get caught up and in the snare of sin is because they like, they lack, rather, spiritual enlightenment. They get saved, but yet still they don't do what is necessary to grow in grace. You can't grow apart from the word. But the devil will lie to you and tell that you can. The devil will lie to you and tell you that you can grow apart from the word, but you can. And so, what if I try to live a life apart from the word? You can't. You won't be effective. God will be able to use you. And where did that thought come from? It originated from the devil. And there you are, not being able to grow, <coughs> not getting the things that God really wants you to have. All because you have listened to the lies of the devil. Now before we close here, I want to just throw this out there. I wonder why are so many good, educated, smart Christians are leaving the church? Have you ever thought about that? I wonder how come the word is being watered down. And you know, Pam, she, she comes to me and says, please, listen at this. You go on YouTube and you find a lot of people saying what ain't so. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? It's coming from the mouth of a man, right? Yes. But can you imagine and look behind and see who influenced him to say that? Yeah. Something behind the scene influenced the man to say that. Instead of, instead of comparing what you're hearing in your head with the word, folks don't do that. Can I tell you something? A lot of time before you do crazy stuff, you have had in your mind not to do it. Yeah. And you went ahead and did it anyway. And you, you're getting ready to do it now. Right. 
Just like a child. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I shouldn't be touching this. I'm going to be on me. But, 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 but it's so compelling. I got to have it. I, I got to touch it and you do it. He's influencing you. Just like, just like a little kid. They got an excuse, but we don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible said foolishness is in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it out. Yes. So that's how come it is necessary to punish. Chastise. Ain't gonna get the Bible said that don't, don't be worried about his crime. So you ain't gonna kill the child because he gonna need this. Otherwise, he gonna be in charge of your house when he gets a little older. <laughs> but y'all can see what will happen though if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Child get to be a certain year old, a certain age, they'll try it. Oh, yeah. See, but I wasn't trying that. <laughs> they, 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 had, they had instilled that long before oh. I got to be a certain age. You don't try that. Yep. Exactly. I'm on. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm for a big mom. No, you don't, no, you don't try that. The <laughs> devil is your problem and not your neighbor. Everybody that lives upon the earth, eventually, you will have to deal with Satan. But if you make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, the knowledge that you gain through the relationship will help you in many areas regarding the attacks of Satan. The devil is your problem, not your neighbor. Somebody say the devil, the devil is my problem, is my problem. Not, my not my neighbor. Give the Lord a hand. Amen.